So, uh, how old are you, by the way? I'm 23. 23. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I thought you maybe older than 18 and stuff, and I shouldn't be speaking about. Oh no. Over there, and I saw Ranveer Kapoor, and I was like, I think I am gay. Like this man has made me gay. <laughs> I thought it was just like you know maybe. I just thought some girls will feel like that. Maybe like when I grow up, I will start having feelings for women, and I would obviously eventually marry a woman. Time when I started finally realizing that okay maybe I'm attracted to men and this is not a phase. Then I think that's when uh, it sort of hit me and I was like maybe I should just kill myself. Let me just make sure everything looks fine. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Talking Dabu podcast. I'm your host Divyan Sharma and in this episode we are going to be talking about the LGBT community. I have with me today Mr. Anvesh Kumar Sahu who. was the youngest indian in 2016 to win the mr gay world india pageant and he also was the first indian to win the troy perry award recently for his compassionate activism for the lgbt community thank you so much anvesh for joining <laughs> us today i am really excited to chat with you thank you thank you so much divyansh for having me and for such a fancy introduction i'm all i'm all up for uh, good long intros about me it's a lot of food uh, for my dwindling uh, self worth which i'm always out and about looking for so thank you thank you so well, much for okay. all of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm we just to like break the ice on the issue and like jump right in on what we have with us today uh, i would want to know about how was the journey of self realization for you like you belong to the gay community you today no and can speak out with conviction that you like men uh, romantically and sexually and all these but what was it back then when you realized for the first time that this is probably the kind of life you'll have to lead yeah i remember um, like around the time we were uh, i think i was 14 that was the time around which uh, like being lgbt iq a plus had become like a big deal so back in 2009 um, that was the time around which conversation around lgbt iq a plus people had sort of uh, begun all over again because uh, the delhi high court had uh, given out the statement that you know maybe well, there could be a hope for uh, the the lgbt iq a plus community and that maybe homosexual acts are going to become uh, legal and uh, in 2013 the same judgment was overturned by the supreme court and we had been sort of thrown back into uh, the bygone era where you know homosexual acts were again uh, Uh, criminalized so um, and i'm saying homosexual acts because uh, according to the law like technically speaking homosexual uh, homosexuality and homosexual acts were two different things uh, according to the um, according to our uh, you know government and uh, homosexual acts had basically been uh, ill were, were, were illegal all this while but it's it's funny because you know you can't separate homosexuality from homosexual acts so they are the same things together and therefore uh, uh yeah i mean in some ways homosexuality itself was also illegal in the country but uh, the i think uh, around 2009 when i was 14 that was when i was also starting to sort of question myself and you know i did start realizing that i was getting attracted to boys around me though i was never attracted sort of in particular to uh, boys from my uh, like classroom but um, like i knew that somewhere within me i was attracted to like maybe actors or you know models never attracted to boys from my class because i was i would always look at them as you know these uh, monsters who would always uh, sort of uh, you know bully me and bring me down so i never so I had any of that kind of a feeling for any of the boys around me but yes for for actors yes i did and i think i have spoken in the past as well that i saw saveria and i saw ranveer kapoor and i was like I think I am gay. Like this man has made me gay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and uh, I think uh, when I started realizing that maybe I have feelings for men, I didn't know that the way I felt for men was called uh, you know being gay in any way at all. So I thought it was just like you know maybe I said sub sub लड़कों को feel होता होगा. Maybe like when I grow up, I will start having feelings for women, and I would obviously eventually marry a woman and all of that. Because like let's just let face the fact that i did grow up in a heteronormative system like many kids all around india or perhaps all around the world and i had absolutely like no idea whatsoever about uh being gay or 
what was the term like queer even we i didn't have one like gay person who i could look out for and you know look out uh, look at and see that you know maybe this is the person that i would want to be in the in the years to come and um, so i think around the time like i was through all through my teenage years i had absolute confusion no clarity at all just going back and forth in fact i remember telling one of my friends as well back then who was very supportive of the queer rights movement she was like you know i think it's absolutely fine for people to be gay it's absolutely fine for let to let them you know live the kind of life they would like to live and i was like no this is absolutely wrong uh, uh, this should completely be criminalized uh, so there was of course a, an element of homophobia within me as well which is why i say that i always i can understand where uh, you know homophobic homosexuals come from where homophobic people come from so yeah a lot of confusion back and forth uh, and then i think at one point in time it had just become extremely difficult like around the time i was 16 17 so like from 2009 2010 2011 and 12 this is the time when around which you sort of start becoming like an, you are an, adol- an adolescent you are you're walking into your ad- you're about to enter your ad- adult years and you finally start questioning what the fuck is sex can i cuss or should or yeah, should not you have you can you can you go in <laughs> so like what is sex uh, what are these things that other people are talking about and, and there were times to be very honest when even like street boys in the classroom and i do remember this one moment and i would like to mention it um i was uh, basically fixing this code we had some computer science assignment in the classroom so we were all in the lab uh, laboratory and we were just like, in codes and stuff so i had uh, sort of stood up and we, the, because the class was almost over so um I was just fixing that code, and some guy from the classroom he comes right behind me. He holds me from uh, he uh, around uh, my, around my torso, basically he holds my torso, and then he starts like dry humping me. So basically, like it was it was a joke. Like it was supposed to be a joke where you know, uh, I mean, I don't even know how that is. a joke but it was joke because obviously like you know you you're looking at gay men as obviously much lower than straight men and, and i didn't ha- i hadn't come out back then so i didn't even know like what what was the difference between the way homosexual people had sex and the way you know straight people had sex like i was that kind of a noob i had absolutely no idea how even straight people had sex but uh, yeah i think uh, when that happened i was just so embarrassed i was like hey mujhe samajh nahi aa raha hai ki kya ho raha hai and then the girls around me like they the colors of their faces completely turned you know blue like they were like okay what the fuck just happened with with this guy and uh, all the guys behind me they were like laughing their asses out and i was like i don't understand like what 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 was so funny about it and then of course now i understand like what the context was and stuff but uh, yeah that's the kind of you know environment i sort of grew up in where all the boys sort of made fun of me and mo- some girls as well and let's not you know uh, in fact uh, you know limit uh, uh, you know let's not mention their gender in some way but i, I feel like i mean it's it's all here like it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you're a boy or a girl like if you don't feel uh, like being inclusive or or for that matter that for that matter at that point in time maybe you were just at an age where you just don't know anything and maybe if i were you know a, a straight kid and i would have been a straight kid back then you know looking at some other fem guy maybe i would have done the same thing probably i don't even know but it's just that this is how we have defined the social structure and how unfortunately like you know kids have to go through stuff like these and um so i was very in fact clear that maybe like every night before going to sleep i would i i had sort of started you know contemplating um, should i just kill myself tonight maybe this is going to be the better way out why am i even sort of putting myself into all this pressure why am i putting my family under all this pressure you know they are going to have a lot of questions eventually as well so let's just get done with this but um something within me told me that you know maybe if i die uh, today then uh, you know there's going to be another unveil in the future and that unveil is not going to have uh, any point of reference at all so why not me becoming my point of reference eventually for uh, and and hopefully for you know many more unveils to come so yeah i think i haven't um, looked back since i just looked um, on the uh, at the at the road forward and uh, i've kept going on and on and i'm grateful that um you know god has been so kind or perhaps the force above us he, uh, he or she has been extremely kind to me and has provided me with uh, a lot of you know strength and resilience and perseverance that i have i probably would have never learned had i not been gay so i i feel like i'm very blessed today that you know god gave me this gift in the form of of my sexuality
that's that's such a big thing to say especially on the point of referencing i can absolutely understand how people are absolutely lost when they are kids and especially if they belong to the community and they see no one around them everyone is fitting in this perfect structure everything is flowing in their life and i mean i can absolutely understand but when when you're talking about these experiences at school what was the first time that you got an outlet was was it any close friend at school or someone at home that you you know talked uh, about it with because as a school yeah. kid i'm sure it must have been extremely like painful yeah mm-hmm. um yes i think now when i look back at it i always laugh at laugh it out because i'm like okay, let's just make let's look at humor in our uh, times of difficulties because uh, that's the way you sort of move forward in life you're not going to like make a start of just feeling sad about stuff uh, whatever you know bad things or ugly things that have happened in the past but uh, uh, i did initially come out to my sister first and uh, when i had come out to her i was crying in, and and just bawling and i was like i don't want to be gay i don't mm-hmm. I, but I'm, i think i am gay this is a horrible thing i just want to kill myself or or maybe i should just you know uh, become a girl so that things just you know um, get get sorted uh, by default uh, but uh, but i i i i remember my sister also asking me that you know anish do you think you are trans and i was like no i'm pretty sure i'm not but i'm i am very sure about the fact that i'm attracted to you know go, uh, attracted to men and um, i somehow I, i had also done my research so i knew like things around the community i i knew what the difference was what the gender spectrum was so obviously i do belong to that you know queer millennial generation who sort of grew up on the internet so i'm grateful i had access to that one computer where i would just be like you know searching for stuff and every time my mom would enter the enter the room i would just like you know control shift control d <laughs> desktop mode <laughs> because uh, i just didn't want her to you know know what i was reading what i was figuring out uh, and uh, when i did come out to her eventually she was completely shocked and maybe we'll talk about that later but you need to answer your question first um, you know it was my sister first and then i i eventually did come out to my friends uh, because uh, i was feeling extremely like uh, you know sort of stifled in like a little cupboard and i was not trying to sort of i couldn't sort of come out and speak about myself freely in any way so uh, i would often you know cry when i was sitting in the class like for no reason at all i would just be sitting and then these thoughts about you know what kind of a life am i going to have in the future they would just pop up in my head and i would just start crying and just didn't know how to sort of you know even speak about it to any of my friends so my friends would always say to me that you know anvesh you think you have all the difficulties in your life everybody has difficulties in their life and i was like uh, maybe you know they are uh, speaking the right thing you know maybe life is as difficult for all of us and i should stop with myself as this you know ke meri zindagi mein sab kuch galat hua hai aur sab kuch mushkil hua hai so yeah i think that's how it sort of initially um, you know started out my um, you know coming out journey i eventually came out to my teacher uh, because uh, mm-hmm. she saw me like, at the brim of literally just crying out loud in the classroom so she said okay anvesh let me just take you out to uh, the adjacent classroom and she took me to this classroom just completely empty and she asked me what's happening what's going on like because we need to talk about this because boards are coming or boards india mein sabse like you know life changing event zindagi mein to aapko acha karna hai and i obviously wanted to do well because i was like you know that's the only way i can find uh, you know i can build a beautiful life for myself so i need to be uh, you know i need to be focused so i need to get all the distractions out of my way so i went and i spoke to my teacher and uh, she uh, like once i started speaking to her i was just like matlab beh gaya mai bilkul bhavnao mein and i just like told her everything that i was going through and uh, she was very sweet i would actually like to mention her mention her name rupinda ma'am um, she took me to a school um, psychologist and she said uh, you know maybe you should, you should just talk to her and you know figure things out and i think once i spoke to her i remember her asking some very personal questions because obviously that's the way it has to be like that's the only way the psychologist can even help me and she was very very sweet uh, i think her name is meghna ma'am i remember so um, so she asked me all these different kinds of questions and i answered all of them wrongly but uh, inside me i sort of knew that you know maybe uh, 
uh, I know now that I am gay and uh, that this is not a phase, that this is not going to end. This is what my life is going to be now. Now let's, you know, wrap it up. Let's now start moving on in my, in my life and see, you know, what kind of a life can I really create for myself from here on. Right. Um, so did, did this change? I mean, when finally, I mean, you fortunately had good support in the form of your teacher and your yeah. sister at home. But college, yeah. mein ke, things change a lot because people have grown up and everyone around mm-hmm. you have somehow formed their opinion on things. So college, mein ke, how, how was all of this different? Were there any safe spaces? But and for our audience sake, I would like to mention that you went to Triple IT Delhi. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's one of the dream colleges for everyone who's pursuing engineering, <laughs> uh, one of the top colleges. So I'm sure things have changed now, but when you were there, how how did the people perceive you? What was the support system like? Mm-hmm. So uh, when I joined Triple IT, it was uh, we had we used to have like really uh, relatively smaller, you know, um, uh, class uh, like student strengths. So we had like I think around 150 uh, uh, in one class, and out of which like there were only 33 kids who were in electronics, which is what I was majoring in. And then the rest were in uh, computer science. But the first year is when you sort of basically you mingle around with everyone because everybody's in the same class, everybody's doing the same thing. So um, I think uh, initially I sort of went into Triple IT knowing that, you know, I'm going to be in, in an engineering college. And I was extremely scared to begin with because I was like, you know, this is going to be another place where maybe I'm going to be. Uh, you know, thrashed completely. And if I don't take a stand for myself, boys are going to come for me. And I remember my father having a conversation with me and he's like, you know, ragging hota hai college mein, tum dhyan se rehna, wo hota hai. And of course, I'd seen three idiots as well, kaise hota hai engineering colleges mein. But uh, thankfully, the, the moment I entered Triple IT, I saw like a big boat over there. Ragging is uh, like illegal and uh, ragging is completely not allowed. You will be asked to leave the college if you rag anyone. So uh, thankfully, never had any like, you know, instances of ragging, but uh, we had like uh, this very interesting uh, competition called Mr. Freshers. So I applied and they, that, that was the moment where they started questioning me stuff. And then they sort of, sort of started coming at me, like one of them start, started coming at me, uh, questioning me about my sexuality. And uh, I was like, you know what, you can associate me to, you know, um, uh, a straight person, a homosexual person, a bisexual person, or any other fi- fancy sexuality that you can come up with, but that's not going to lessen my dignity or my the way I value myself. So at that point in time, it was a big um, statement because 2013, I think I, around that time, it you know you didn't actually talk about being LGBT, IQ, A plus as openly as you do today. Today it's still like a big conversation. Today I see kids joining college with like a lot of lot more confidence at least in the cities. But back then it was a completely different ball game altogether. Like everybody would look down upon you if you were gay. And that moment exactly, I remember like there was, there was so many rumors in college that, you know, maybe I am gay and uh, like everybody sort of started looking at me differently. And I was anyway, like a very colorful kid. And I was, I had a very, uh, I had, I do have an effeminate demeanor, which I'm very proud of, but um, uh, it was something that, uh, you know, it was very difficult to sort of uh, maneuver myself through uh, because there were constant judgments always. And, uh, but I was like, you know, maybe I will, I will figure this out. So um, I just sort of, I think looking back now, probably what worked the best for me was the fact that I never took anybody's shit down my throat. Like I was like, if you are going to be homophobic, if you're going to be mean to me, then I'm going to call that out. And I'm going to tell you how awful of a person you are for treating me like shit. Because I have been treated like a garbage bin. I know what it means to be not valued at all, to know, to not, to not have a sense of dignity within me. Um, and I'm going to change that for myself because I deserve as much respect and as much, uh, and I'm as valuable or perhaps more valuable than you are. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, um, you know, over time I sort of started, uh, as I started understanding my sexuality, as I started embracing it, I started also embracing like all the fun parts about that, that's such a good uh, sort of uh, self-perception that you have and and a great confidence booster <laughs> also I must say <laughs> I think everyone should live on that kind of ideology to set standards for yourself and not take shit below a particular <laughs> point 
<laughs> this I'll put in the teaser shot. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, so now talking about home. We touched upon college. We touched upon your school life. Now, uh, as you earlier mentioned, that there is a story there, and I'm sure there is. How, when was the first time you came out to your parents, and how did they take it? So um, I came out through uh, an article which I had written for. Uh, I think it was Pink Pages. Yes, it was Pink Pages, and uh, I had written like I basically written my coming out story and. Uh, my uh, my sister my elder sister she is an english grad student so i was i was reached out to her and i was like you know what listen i want to sort of uh, um you know write uh, an article about my coming out because i don't i don't i didn't see a single article um, like that in the indian context so i was like maybe if i just write my story out maybe if i put my story out maybe i would be able to change at least one person's life like how cliche that could be but that's exactly how i was i was a very idealistic person and i was like you know i just want to change maybe one person's life through my story so uh, i reached out so she she suggested that you you uh, gather around all the emails of the editors aur unko email likho so uh, i gathered around like i think saw uh, email id mujhe mil gaye in uh, google kar, kar, karte karte to uh, wahan se mera safar shuru hua and then i started like stumbled upon this one email id which was udayans udayan dhar who uh, was the editor of uh, pink pages um, he's in the us now so he's he's not very fancy now <laughs> but uh, anyway he's doing i think he's phd now but back then he was working with uh, uh, godrej and uh, he had this you know magazine called the pink pages which was the, in which was actually india's i think one of india's first national yeah. lgbtq mag so Uh, yeah, I was like, लिखते हैं उनसे और लिखते हैं उनको और देखते हैं if if they ever you know revert to my uh, email and he was in fact the only person who actually reverted to my email nobody else reverted <laughs> so uh, I was like ठीक है great perfect no doesn't matter like one person reverted one out of hundred <laughs> great probability <laughs> so uh, and he said you know maybe we can flesh this out a little better because I was I had just started writing so I was not like some pro writer I was only eighteen nineteen so. um he was like we will run this through the editor and we'll see what uh, we can do with this uh, but uh, in my head i was like the best writer that there, there is so i was like this is what, what editing i talk about and uh, thankfully that article finally um, came out uh, and uh, once that came out i was like you know let me just take this article to my parents and um, my sister was like you know don't come out to them right now come out to them when you're like you know financially independent mm-hmm. and uh, I was pretty sure that you know by the time I would be financially independent, which was going to be like you know maybe when I'm like twenty four, twenty five. I am not that patient at all. Like I am not waiting for anybody. इतने साल सात साल तो मैं बिल्कुल वेट नहीं करने वाला हूँ. मुझे तो मिस्टर के इंडिया में अप्लाई करना है. और मिस्टर के इंडिया में मैंने देखा है अप्लाई करने के लिए you have to be out to your parents. So I was like now fuck this. I can just take this article to my parents and then break the ice. Took the article. My father read it. He was like, इसमें लिखा है I am gay. and i am very proud of it iska matlab kya hai so i was like theek hai puri mahabharat ko wapas shuru karte hain i explained everything to them but uh, they couldn't care less about all this mahabharat all this uh, vocabulary that i was talking about and my mom started crying she was like what is happening what has happened to my son western culture ka influence hai or if my son has been killed and i was like theek hai i mean yeah whatever so uh, i think back then somehow i just had this sense of patience within me i was like you know maybe they will figure it out and i also had like good advice from one of my teachers so preeti ma'am i remember she called me up and uh, she was she's a teacher of mine from like you know odisha when i used to study in odisha and i'm still you know very much in touch with her uh, so she reached out to me and she was like you know listen anvesh no matter what just be patient with your parents because it took some time for you to come out to yourself how can you expect your parents yeah, to sort of accept okay. you so um for me um it didn't make any sense at that point in time but i was like you know i will listen to her let me just see what happens eventually so um, i think now looking back of course i have no complaints at all and i'm so so grateful and i'm so glad that i had listened to her advice and sort, sort of took it very seriously and uh, it has totally like i mean uh, my parents have evolved over time they have become completely different people altogether right now and uh, yeah very very uh, grateful for uh, the kind of people that i've had the kind of advice that i've had all this way 
Yeah, I'm sure uh, a lot of parents would feel when a kid comes out to them that it would be much better if he were the other way. But yeah, I think absolutely. yeah. But I think like all we have is to keep questioning ourselves and to keep you know thinking whether what we are thinking as normal, perceiving as normal. Yeah. It's it's is it true or not? I think it's very mm-hmm. important. But that that journey of you know calling it Western influence. to now yeah. accepting and embracing you how has that been like for them and also consider the influence of the relatives or the extended family hmm. how has it been like for all of them so um, i came out when i was only 18 going on 19 and uh, in one year itself like i had already become mr gay india because i applied for mr gay india when i was 20 uh, and um, so by the time i had become mr gay already like all over uh, the odia newspapers so mm-hmm. i was plastic odia news tv and uh, you know media channels so i was like uh, so it that way it was e- easier because everybody now sort of knew that i am gay uh, though they didn't understand what it meant to be gay so uh, i i was like you know doesn't matter like as long as they just know that i'm gay i'm sort of out by default to everyone and that was honestly my ideology i was like i don't want to come back, come out to everyone again and again because it is it is extremely taxing i have come out to my parents i've come out to my sister i've come out to my friends bas ho gaya and now everybody else can just know it by default and then uh, i don't have to be on any application anymore if i want to go out on a date with anyone whoever wants to go out on a date with me can just text me on facebook so that was those were the kind of thoughts that i was having back then ke matlab uh, i mean those regular teenage thoughts so uh, um, i didn't really think through this you know i didn't think through about uh, think through how my acquaintances are going to you know react to my sexuality but funny enough uh, because probably you know there was a celebrity hood uh, there was a celebrity tag that was associated to me and um, they sort of found me important uh, all of a sudden like uh, there were colleges who were reaching out to me so that you know they would uh, they were they wanted me to finally you know come to their uh, you know spaces and talk about the gender spectrum talk about sexuality talk about being queer um talk about being an empowered queer why why is it important for us to create inclusive spaces for more queer people uh, like uh, like me so um i think uh, they started sort of taking my advice seriously they started taking whatever i was saying very seriously and i've always been an old soul i've been very self introspective and i think genuinely speaking that is exactly what has really got me out of a lot of trouble as well and I do very well remember, like uh, before I had become Mr. Gambia, nobody would take any of my ad- ad- uh, advice seriously, and everybody would be like, "You know, कुछ भी बोल रहा है, बकवास कर रहा है, हमें नहीं सुनना ही नहीं है इसकी, सुननी नहीं है उसकी इसकी बातें." But uh, eventually, sort of uh, things started come falling into place, and now everybody takes me too seriously. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> so now let's properly come to the exciting part. <laughs> How was Mr. Gambia? I have been everything exciting. What are you yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all your difficult no, questions sad <laughs> questions i have added my yeah, favor my personal task to all of them hats off to you for that but the most <laughs> exciting part in your journey the most glamorous rather i'll just rephrase yeah. is mr gayward india how was yeah. it for you how did of course we talked a bit but how did it majorly like change your life and your self perception Okay, yeah. so um, I was uh, yeah nineteen when I started actually preparing for uh, the competition, and uh, I was uh, very like you know completely driven, and I was like you know I want to make this change happen. I want to completely like change my life. I want to be able to change everybody's life. So um, I had a lot of you know fire in me, and uh, I remember I used to you know go jogging every uh, morning uh, at around seven in the morning. तो वेन आई टू गो आउट इन द लेन वहां पे एक छोटा सा वो लाइक अ लिटिल हार्ट यूज टू बी देर वहां पे एक सिक्योरिटी गार्ड बैठते थे और वो मुझे पूछते थे अनवेश आप ओलंपिक में भागने जा रहे हैं क्या आप कुछ प्रिपेयर कर रहे हैं ओलंपिक्स के लिए बिकॉज ओलंपिक्स वॉज अबाउट Like it was going to happen in 2016 back then. So everybody in in where, where I used to stay, they used to they used to think that I'm preparing for some athletic event, and I was like, no, that's not the case at all. Uh, so uh, I'm just preparing. I couldn't even like tell them like what is it that I'm preparing for. So I was like, I'm just take like, doing it for personal fitness and stuff. So yeah. Anyway, moving on. So it it actually happened from there, and I started uh, because I come from. 
a very uh, you know from a very small village in Odessa. So I had no idea about makeup. I had no idea about uh, the glitz and the glam. I didn't know how to. I didn't know anything about you know putting myself up together very well, wearing the right kind of clothes, getting the right kind of stuff, and uh, just absolutely clueless about uh, you know ab- about the, the 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 beauty aspect of of uh, you know. Uh, the pageant uh, world and uh, i think i probably like thought that you know this is this is very easy which is why i was sort of able to do it because uh, i was very delusional about it like beauty pageants are not easy at all there is a lot of effort that goes into making all of this happen there's a lot of there's a team that really puts everything together and there's a lot of self awareness that needs to be there when you're actually going into the pageant world so now like when i think about it i'm like you know good like pushing like young children into it is like not the way about it uh, you should really like prepare yourself well before you know or you have like that mental state ke acha yahi face karna hai abhi or there's going to be a lot of mean people that you're going to come across but uh, somehow i just learned all of these things on the way so i sent out my application uh, you know in 2015 towards the end of 2015 and the next thing i know i got a call from mr k india they were like you know send out your send out your we really like your application and uh, i think you have, i had made it to top to top 20 or top 15 something of that sort and uh, then they were like you know a set of things that i had to do i sent them all the requisite and then um, I think in January uh, I got a call that you know I have in January of 2016 which was uh, like almost you know 5 years ago now wow crazy so um, I got a call and they said to me that you know you've made it to uh, the finale and you just have to come to Bombay when they completely delusional completely believed in the fact that I'm going to win it I was like you know the, nobody's going to be there nobody's going to be as amazing as me as awesome as me so I obviously going to win this competition and come and to my surprise i won <laughs> so yeah delusion helps sometimes <laughs> okay so anvish then you went on to uh, the mr gay world rounds so how was what was that experience like to finally you know be with all of these like big glamorous international people who have uh, <laughs> who have the crowns from their own uh, territories so what what was it like to be there and meet all of them yeah well uh, i know everybody thinks that it was my big break it was like me being like you know put in this uh, amazing beautiful world with all these beautiful men first of all it's a lot of preparation like anybody who's mm-hmm. probably wanting to get into the pageant in the years to come like be very ve- well aware of the fact that this is going to be very 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 difficult so um, yeah it was just like months of me like you know waking up early in the morning feeding myself all these you know eggs and protein and all of that to just you know sort of prepare myself for that pageant and there is a lot of pressure that you go through because you're representing your country and you really want to make sure that you know you are taking the best of you and the best of your country with you for for a competition of this sort so um yeah it was it was absolutely um uh, like in in a lot of ways very life changing because it was the first time that i was go traveling abroad and i was not only traveling abroad but i was traveling all alone um i was i was in my head i was literally like a 13 year old um, i might have been 20 but i was still very much of a kid and i was sort of pushing myself to explore this world i was just very curious and uh, you know these uh, a series of you know experiments that sort of you know pushed me into the limelight and i i had this really big responsibility that i i had to i had to take it forward and um, i think uh, in some ways definitely uh, like i said very life changing because you get to meet all these beautiful men and they're also like the best of their countries so you get to you get to know more about the world in general and it is extremely important to know how people are living you know on the other side of the globe i was just very curious to know wo log khana kaise khate hain wo log school kaise jate hain wo log sabzi kharidne kaise jate hain wo log kya khate hain lunch mein wo log dinner mein kya khate hain so um, i was just very very curious and i was uh, just happy to finally be in this space where i could i knew that you know i had the ability to have a conversation to hold a very meaningful conversation with each one of them and they were willing to listen to my story and uh, that was a big deal for me coming from a completely like a very very small place you know like i said in odessa and really a long long way for me but i do remember in retrospect also feeling extremely poor i was like sabke paas itna acha paisa hai sab log itne acche acche kapde pehen ke aaye hain mere paas to paise hi nahi hai main to i remember mere paas 6000 rupees the mere bank account mein when i went to uh, 
Malta. And uh, I remember like uh, being at that uh, check-in counter and uh, I was, so you have like a baggage limit of, uh, of 30 kgs when you're traveling abroad, right? So uh, I was 8 kgs extra and uh, the lady on the kiosk, she told me that uh, you have to pay 8,000 rupees more for, uh, it wasn't even 8,000, it was 12,000 rupees for uh, the extra luggage. And I was like, there is no way. I don't even have. I don't have 12,000 rupees in my account. I don't have But I was, I was just so, you know, uh, resilient in some ways. And I was just like, I had this enthusiasm in me that I had to go. Like, anything will happen. And I, this is all happening like 3 in the morning. Completely like sleepless. With so much pressure that I have to go there. I have to look good. I have to put makeup on. I have to do everything. But uh, anyway, so I did what I did was I I had this small bag and then I put all my extra luggage in that small bag and then left the small bag at the oh. airport and I didn't look back. I was like, fuck this bag, fuck all this extra stuff. I don't care. Don't have the money to pay them all this money. Let me just like now go and like live my dream. So um, yeah, I think uh, I do feel somehow that maybe if I would have gone maybe like when I'm 25, which earlier was my plan, you know, I would have probably gone with a little more financial backing because it was very embarrassing sometimes for me to ask money for my, from my parents. And, uh, but I was like, you know, uh, this is the only way I can sort of figure this way out. And I had already, even when I had applied for the pageant, I had applied through my own money through, uh, like, you know, applying through internships. So uh, I had sort of, it was 9,000 rupees, which I had already like 3,000 rupees in a tuxedo. I was like, you know, this is all the money that I have now. I need to spend it very wisely. I need to spend it very wisely. You know, I'm very grateful that my parents also really, really supported me, even financially, because pageants, let's face it, are expensive. And even if I had like, you know, Selena Chetli, she was very kind to, you know, in some ways uh, sponsor me, even Sushant Devgikar, who uh, is the producer yeah. of Mystic India in India. And uh, they were, they were really there for me. So they really handpicked clothes for me. They handpicked shoes for me. And um, I just learned like, you know, grooming and all of these things, which are honestly, which were very difficult to me because I was like, you know, the mind is something that I'm still very, com you know, sh uh, sure of because I know who I am. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to be intelligent, but uh, I'm still coming. I was still coming out of my shell. So I needed that little extra nudge. So I had that around me. Hmm. Quite interesting. Yeah, it's such a... <laughs> Such a big journey that you have had there, and I'm sure yes. in retrospect it must feel so much more fulfilling. And I, I mean, it had its fair <laughs> share of struggles, but it's a story to tell, nevertheless. We had a wonderful chat today. So, but before ending this episode, I want to just have a full circle moment. And in the starting, when we talked about when you were growing up, you had this intrinsic homophobia within yourself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. most of us do. And since you were able to question and re-question yourself on those things, you could come out of it. So what do you think? You are an activist yourself. What do you think uh, should, should we need to change? And what are those small things that we can do that our audience, whoever's listening and whoever's tuned into this episode today can, can do in yeah. their daily lives to just question themselves and to not, you know, just like be little more soft on those who identify as queer around them. So yeah. how can we bring this change about? How can we break the taboo, so to say? So um, I get this question a lot all the time. And uh, that is exactly the question that I try to answer myself, you know, uh, and I have tried answering that question again and again, even for myself. How do I change this world and try to make this a little better for people like me? And uh, over the years, I've realized that first of all, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen little by little. And it's going to happen by more people like me joining in together, coming in together, living their true lives in, in the best way possible, right in front of everybody. You know, I have seen men around me, boys around me, who are, you know, my colleagues, my acquaintances completely transform over the years from being my bullies, to being some of my strongest, you know, uh, and uh, I have, you know, somehow, you know, when, when I, in fact, especially like when I was uh, part of the fashion team, I remember, um, you know, we had all kinds of, you know, men and women in the team uh, while I was, in, uh, while I was at NIFT. 
we had uh, you know men who were like the quintessential definitions of you know what models should be should have been like you know 20 years ago like all those buff men but we also mm. had men like uh, relatively skinny or who are uh, you know femme representation there's a lot of interesting representation now happening and i have seen them respect me and that sort of made me realize that okay, i am able to i can change the narrative and i have changed the narrative in some ways and so can everybody else like me so first of all the the work has to happen from people like us by living our just our two selves we can really change a lot of things that can be the biggest you know form of revolution that we really can bring bring in um and secondly i think other than that i do very strongly believe that uh, um i think uh, just bringing in more queer characters in you know books and you know trying trying mm. to push that narrative. in a very subtle way uh, i was i was um, you know using duolingo the other day and i saw this very interesting story about two women in love you know i it, it was called um, the the story was basically about two women going on a honeymoon and i was like matlab kuch zyada story nahi banaya inhone dindora nahi peet rahe ki dekho hum kitne inclusive hain they just made a story um uh, which is called honeymoon and it is about two women who were who have just gotten married and they're going out on a on a trip abroad so uh, these are subtle ways in which we can bring representation in textbooks and we can bring in a more inclusive conversation in schools and classrooms to begin with other than that um, i would also suggest that you know you go out and follow all these queer people on the internet there are so many queer folks amazing queer folks amazing queer artists who do such lovely stuff on the social media i have been doing this melanin everyday series where i do a little bit of comedy political commentary as well and i talk about you know my skin color celebrating it looking at fem uh, skinny brown men as beautiful gorgeous men and not looking at them at them as you know these sex um, maniacs or you know uh, you know some sort of like assaulters that you know people used to look at look us at uh, as you know in the years gone by so these are little ways in which we can bring in representation ourselves and this is how the the people around us can pitch in a little more as well so open yourself to more conversations you know watch mo- more movies about queer people i think books to bahut aajkal koi padhta nahi hai movies and social popular culture se hi sab kuch everything is driven so i think the more more people like uh, you know from the queer community they start coming out and they start becoming part of all these beautiful amazing films and you know books and uh, you know writings and and social media i think this is how we can actually bring change the narrative in the popular culture and yeah. not just in like you know one year cities or like just two year cities yeah very important and also very important on those who don't identify with the queer community to be a little more proactive and to reach out to people and not assume heterosexuality so to say and reinforce yes. the heteronormative uh, culture around so yes. i think all of these things are really important and i hope everyone who's watching this episode took something away from your story uh, and your confidence and the way you handle challenges as well um so thank you so much anvesh for joining us today it was absolutely wonderful to chat with you thank you thank you so much for having me i'm so grateful and really really glad to that i get to be a part of a podcast that ira singhal had once also been a part of <laughs> i fan i met her during one of the edx events and uh, i was just completely blown by her story i was like what am i doing in my life like i am so and uh, I think listening to her and then you know when I saw that she's she's been a part of your podcast I was like amazing I have to do this <laughs> carry on then thank you so much again okay. for having me have a lovely day my dear okay you too bye bye take care bye